Hey, welcome back. I want to uh, I want to go over something that I discovered today. I haven't been able to find a lot of information regarding using USB video game controllers with Linux CNC. Um, there is a way you can use either Joy2 Key or uh, Q Joypad software, but the problem with those is that this computer is not attached to the internet. So I can't download all of the packages that are required to get everything working, and then I'm not I'm not Linux savvy by any stretch. Um, I don't even know what sudo is for. I just know that you have to use it a lot in your in your commands. Um, so anyway, I want to go over a quick a quick example of what I did today to get my game controller to work with Linux CNC. So on this machine, on this machine I'm using stepper motors. So I set everything up through the step configuration. So I use the step conf wizard to generate all of the necessary information to get the Gecko G540 to communicate with parallel port. I'm currently building a benchtop mini mill with you know ball screws and uh, DMM technology servos, so on and so forth. That is an upcoming video. I'm doing an entire um, entire build on uh, entire build series on that. But for right now, I want to go over what I did to make this work. The reason why I pointed out that I'm doing the mini mill is because while the step conf wizard, if I open this up and I go in and I create a new configuration, blah, 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 blah. In step conf, all you do is assign your controller information for your, for your breakout board or your, in this case, G540, which, um, but there's also another application called PNC Conf, uh, point and click configuration. And what the point and click configuration adds to your mix is that it gives you it gives you this external controls interface. The external control interface allows you to assign USB jogging here, which gives you this menu to start inputting the basic information for all of your axial moves, um, things like that. It's a little cumbersome to get it figured out. So in this case here, you'll notice that my X plus, my X minus, Y plus, Y minus, they have weird input configuration names. Thumb two, joystick, top, thumb, blah, blah, blah. What these are, if I go to test device, I get my HAL meter comes up. And when I go to HAL meter, if I want to just double check, in this case, I'll do the, the ABS hat 0x count, the first one. And I know that that particular one is the joypad directional to the left, which gives me a minus one. If I hit the right, it gives me a plus one. If I do up and down, I don't get anything because those are the y-axis for the directional pad. So if I go to y-axis and I go up and down, and down. You'll see that ABS hat 0y counts will give me directional up and down and the X will give me directional left and right. Problem with this controller is that it's a little finicky in the diagonals. So when I try to move the machine around in one direction, if I'm if I just rock slightly up or down the yeah, the Y axis will take off on me, or if I'm using Y and I slightly rock it a little bit, uh, the, the X will move. 
So what I did was I assigned the buttons, one, two, three, and four, for my X and Y, and then for my Z I used the top keys here. In order to do that, I had to go in and I had to go through all of these inputs, scroll down, find what I needed. In this case here, I'll use pinky. So I'm going to show you pinky. Right now I know that pinky is E positive. So if I press my top button here, which is pinky, it gives me true. Once you have your directions established and all your buttons, the button names rather, once you have your button names established and you go to the OK button here where it says close me when done, hit OK. You get this, this little printout here of all the available buttons in your configuration. To assign each of these directions, you just copy that information for the particular name button and put it into X, Y, and Z respectively. So if I wanted to use the directionals, I would use the input 0, ABS hat OX is negative and is positive. Here I would put the is positive. Here I would put the is negative. Um, the control pad Y positive and negative are uh, opposite to what I would want to use. So I would put Y positive is um, is hat uh, Y negative, and then my, my negative would be hat is positive. But again, I, don't, I didn't want to use those because I did try it initially and it didn't work very well for my, for my application. Down here, you've got speed A, speed B. Now I'm going to go over this a little bit because the thing with speed A and speed B is when you assign buttons through the digital control in the external controls menu, what this does is it assigns its own series of jog inputs that correlate to these speeds right here. So these feed rates right here. I got 20 inches a minute default, 100 inches a minute A speed, 200 inches a minute B speed, and 540 inches a minute A speed or AB speed. What those mean is default is you don't touch anything, you just move the machine around and it moves 20 inches a minute. A speed, in my case, I have it set to top two, and B speed I have set to base. Top two is this button here. Base is the button behind it. And then, so to speed this thing up, while I'm jogging around, I can use the A speed, so I hit the top button, that gives me 100 inches a minute. If I hit the bottom button, that gives me 200 inches a minute. And if I hold them both together, that'll give me my full rapid traverse rate of 540 inches a minute, which is my X and Y rapids. My Z is only 200, so it, it caps it out at 200 inches a minute. But what I did, so, so to go through all that, there's not really, there's nothing else here that you would use for the USB. So you go through and you set all your ports and pins and blah, 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 your, your, you know, your axis and things like that. What I did was because I'm not using a Mesa card, I just put in dummy numbers for all this stuff here. And what it did for me was that it created, if I go into my Linux CNC configurations, what it gave me was this my Linux CNC machine, which was just, just the default machine that was created through PNC Conf. And then under the INI file, oh, I'm sorry, let me back up. Under the HAL file, it gave me a couple of things that I had to to copy over to my existing HAL file for my G540. It gave me this load RT MUX16 names jog speed. It gave me 
add F jog speed, uh, servo thread. And it gave me, toward the bottom, HAL UI signals. And then it gave me these USB device jog button signals. So what I did was I copied the UI signals and the jog button signals to my existing config, which was my G540 config. Under my HAL, I put in the load RT, MUX16 names, jog speed. I put in the add F jog speed servo thread. Once I was done with that, I put the rest of the information into my custom HAL, or my custom post GUI HAL. Here are the HAL UI signals, and here are the jog button settings. But now what I did was, my X positive, X negative, Y positive, Y negative, and Z positive, Z negative, I have set to the, the GMO Kapai pin signals instead of using the ones that were given to me in the original configuration, which are HAL UI jog zero plus, hog, <laughs> hog. HAL UI jog 0 minus, 1 plus, 1 minus, and 2 plus, 2 minus. These ones give you the functionality of using the jog speeds of 20, 100, 200, and 540 by using those top keys. I don't like doing that. So what I did was I just changed those to the, the GMOKAPI jog X plus, X minus, Y plus, Y minus, Z plus, Z minus, uh, pins that were in the help file. So if I went into documentation and I go to user interfaces under using Linux CNC, go to gmokapi, go to how pins, and then under where was it? It was under jog how pins. And then somewhere around here, here, yeah, jog how pins. It shows you right here, gmokapi jog x plus, x minus, y plus, y minus, so on and so forth. So I copied those values into my custom post GUI how, and that gave me the feed rates that are on the actual interface. So I'll show you that. I'll fire everything up. Let me get out of here. Go away. All right, I'll fire this up so I can hear it's going to get noisy. So I'll fire up Linux CNC. Take it out of e-stop. Now right now my turtle is set to 180. Or I'm sorry, my rabbit is set to 180 and my turtle is set to 90. So if I, if I rabbit around... The machine's currently moving at 180 inches a minute using the keyboard. When I pick up the controller, it's still moving at 180 inches a minute with the controller. If I speed this up to 540 or if I do anything in between, so 420, You'll see that with the controller, it's using the values here. With the other settings, it didn't matter what I was using here, it would always jog at the feed rates that were specified in the A, B, and the A, B, or the default. Doing it this way also gives you the functionality of using the continuous increment selections here. So you got continuous and increment. So right now I'm at point one. And when I
you can see that it only does the 0.1 increment. If I go back to continuous, you can hear it's moving at that feed rate again. So because I didn't see hardly any information on YouTube regarding that configuration, it took me a little while to get it. I, again, I'm not a, I'm not a Linux guy. I'm not, I'm very new to HAL. So anybody who is using Linux CNC and wants to do things that they're, you know, th things that are a little out of the box, I'm trying to provide as much information as I can. So thanks for watching. Um, leave me any comments if you have a better way to do it or if you know of uh, uh, an easier way to do it, please let me know. But that was my finding, and I, I hope to uh, hope to share more information with everybody. Thanks for watching.